It's away day with all been excited for. It's Wrexham away. My first ever away day by train was Wrexham back in 2001 and we drew 3 3. I made with a long term friend of mine who I first met at Berry Away, same season um, when we got an injured time goal for Bruce Rob. Sorry, Rob. Morning. What's your prediction for today? Other than getting hopelessly drunk. 2 1 for us. Good to hear. Breakfast come here to the Tudor Cafe. Fantastic staff and one of the best breakfasts in Oldham. Cheers for the brew as well. So, what a week it's been again. Um, first of all, shout out to the two young lads who came talking to me in the club shop after the game last week. I apologise for not being able to talk to you. I was stuck in a queue. The queue was quite long and also I was also talking to someone. Anyone that knows me will tell you off the hand of heart, I've got time to talk for anyone unless you're an idiot or a wanker. But you guys, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance. So I did come out looking for you. You're both gone. Feel free to on to me if I'm not talking to anyone. And I'm not in a rush. I'm happy to talk football with anyone. And you can see I probably get accused of talking too much. As you can see on this video. Nice to meet Mark the other day. Uh, Winston Town assistant manager. But an Oldham fan. I've been talking to him on Twitter for years. So it's nice to put a face to him. And have a different perspective from football. Someone who works in the industry. And within non-league itself. Interesting one thing he said that even at the lower levels of non league now, players there still have agents. Apologise for no video the other night or the brief shorts. Basically, we hit bad traffic before Birmingham and after. By the time we got to ground, it was nearly seven o'clock. It was heaving. I would have pre arranged to meet a few people, so I didn't really get a chance to put it together. The worst thing is, I'd done a pre few pre videos before I'd set off. Um, I was going to use them another day, but. Obviously, we all know the whole point of the way they used to have a good day out and these videos are a bonus and it's good that people are asking me where are they or how come I've not done it. Um, one of the lads from Shaw said to give Ralph Wardle's new coat and jacket a throw out, shout out. It looks all right. Nice one, Ralph. So, um, let's get back to the first part, which was the Solio game last week. It was a day of celebration. We know now that the club's back in our hands, ground. So we own everything. Frank beforehand had a big key. I put a video on Twitter. Big thanks to Joe Payne for filming it and letting me use it. Unfortunately, I've got it in the ground just as it happens when I didn't get a chance to. It was a nice feeling overall. So we're hoping we could back it up with a good performance, more importantly, a win. I so my look back on the Solio game. Well, I don't think it was a bad game. I actually enjoyed it. For the first half especially, it was one of the better performances I've seen this season. And when you look back at the end of the year, I reckon that would be probably most people's top 10 games, or at least the first half anyway. Um, we had chances to bury the game, they had a couple. I thought Rooney put in another good performance, if only he'd buried that chance. Obviously, we could have put the game to bed, and if you do watch the highlights on our club's YouTube channel, you'll see the opportunities were there, we just couldn't seal it. The lad from Crew had a few chances, but again, it still doesn't really overfill me with confidence, don't get me wrong. He puts himself about, he does run about, and watching the highlights, he probably did better than what I initially thought he did. Um, Nuttall played okay, he holds the ball up well. Obviously, it's just that at that time, that goal he needed. Sadly, in the second half, we started to sit back too much. I could see the nerves were kicking in, we were giving sloppy balls away a little bit. Obviously, towards the end, we saw um, the two bookings, and it did have a knock-on effect, um, obviously. They eventually kicked it out and not giving the ball for that free kick. I'm not going to lie, it was a brilliant goal for them. I won't say it was a fluke goal, but 95% of the time, if you tried to do an overhead kick, it wouldn't have gone in, it would have gone over the bar. Obviously, they put on a winning feeling. Never say die, played to the whistle, would have been a better headline, but if I'd been in that away end, one of our players had scored that goal, bloody hell, I'd have been over the moon mentally celebrating, and yet it would have felt like a win. Maybe that could be a pivotal moment now for Solio because they've still got an outside shot at the playoffs and they've actually not got a bad run in. And sometimes you hear that game-changing moment that defies your season. We saw it years ago against Gillingham when we got relegated to that sending off later on. And I won't mention 1994 again, but it's one of those. I thought Hudson had a good game. It was just that moment of madness at the end. Obviously, Solo were not a good... I won't say they were a good team. They weren't a bad team, but... They were physical, they were a dirty team, they felt looked a bit more like they were after a raw rumble towards the end, but at spells he'd had a bit of decent football in them. Obviously, I thought Sharon played really well again. Yardy, another performance. Kitchen's looking better. Sutton put a few good challenges in. 
Green again on the wing. I still think first half we see the better of him. Second half it does seem to die off just a little bit. Obviously, it was annoying that they scored. We didn't kill him off again. And it's games like that that at some point will come back to haunt us. Maybe not this year because I said four points should see us safe to another win and that'll do it. But in the long run, we need to basically finish teams off, have that little bit of urgency. Time wasting at a 1 0 at home with 15 or so minutes to go to the goal. We're not in that position to do that at the moment. But in time, like you say, it's something hopefully we'll improve on and we can have these 3 0, 2 0 wins. The second goal and then have been absolutely out of sight. To be fair, there's a few Solio fans in the rifle range before the game and we actually like good crack with them, a good chat with them. They're still amazed that we're in the same league as them, but that's how it is at the moment. Obviously, the result did put a little bit of down on what should have been a good celebratory day. I wasn't in the fans' bar after the game. Um, obviously, Frank, by all accounts, was playing Moldy Old Doe on the canisters. I've got a few photos. Um, I've not had a chance to see the video. I wasn't in the fans' bar that day. The mates who come from City actually did enjoy the game. Two of them left before we scored. It's, it's not happening when we played out the shot as well. Obviously, in a moment, I'll get on to the Weldstone game. I was there with the owned the green shirt, but I've now gone and bought both the home shirt and the tangerine shirt. So we own all three for this year to add to my collection. And obviously, throughout the season, I don't mind wearing either. Tuesday night, we went down to um, Weldstone in northwest London. It was a decent game. It was entertaining. On reflection, a draw was probably a fair result. Both teams had chances to win it. In the first half, obviously, they had a couple of further chances. Nuttall put us in the lead with a good goal. He took it well, nicely finished. Shortly after that, we did have a few more chances to make it 2-0. Obviously, at times, um, we were able to put the ball in. They threw 11 men behind the ball. Second half, they came out looking a better side. They pressed us. They pushed us. They kept us in our own half and managed to get two goals, which basically turned the game on its head. Once we got it back to 2-2, we looked more like scoring. Obviously, not all put the penalty in. Fondop had a chance at the end. I think Sutton is a cracking little player, but for me, he's not a right back. He puts the challenges in, he puts the tackles in, but he was beaten a few times. Rooney actually had a quiet game on Tuesday. I thought Chapman myself um, actually played all right when he came on. And it's fair to um, Weldstorm, it was end to end because they weren't all the other part time, they were not afraid to go at us. Hudson played okay. I won't say it was his best game so far in a Oldham shirt. Obviously, there's a few times he had the ball and it seemed to go out a play when he kicked it. But again, the pitch made it hard. It weren't usual pitch. It was an old, typical boggy style pitch. But let's not forget the non-league for a reason. So that they'll use that to their advantage. It's games like then, we should people say, no, we should be winning. But let's not forget, Weldstorm, one of the better teams this season I've seen come to Bamja. It's my man of the match, another solid performance in midfield. When we did score that penalty and got it back to 2-2, in my eyes, we looked more like we to go on and win the game. We did have late chances from Nuttall and Fondop. Weldstorm themselves had a late chance earlier on, but... It's one of those, just take a point. Yeah, I know people saying, oh, settling for a point at Welds on this mediocrity. It could have been, again, I still think months ago, we probably would not have drawn that. And again, at times when they were pressing us, just like against Solihull on Saturday, I felt we're starting to look like we're sitting back too deep and we can't go to these places and sit back for a draw. 
They're not top of the table. They're not running away with the league. And this is, again, my point where next year needs to be that bit more attacking focused in us. Because if not, teams like, say, when we couldn't run away from home early this year, are going to expose us for that. But good spirits. Um, fair play to the players. They all came over and applauded everyone. And yeah, they did put a shift in. And it wasn't a bad performance. It was just one of those games. I'm sure those that went and those that watched it will say that on another day. We probably could have won that and another day would have lost it. I'm wearing a retro goalkeeping top today from the 90s. I don't really own many goalkeeping tops, so I do like it. A few people have asked me about the leather jacket. I've worn a few games with a big Latics crest on the back. Again, it was from in the 90s. Um, I got it off someone a few years ago. We were selling it. I'm not sure there's many knocking around. So if you do get hold of one, good luck. It probably wasn't Hudson's best game for us. Um, he did make some saves. It was a little bit nerves at times, a few of his kicks. But for me, he's, he's doing an all right job until Norman comes back in. I didn't um, go to the fans forum the other night. I was working and I've not had a chance to watch it. But from what I've read online on Owen the Blues Twitter, um, a lot of positivity from it. Some good vibes, similar to when I went to meet with Lee Johnson when he first joined the club. Just a few snippets here. Um, Darren Hall confirmed the budget's top six. Um, Unsworth confirmed next season the pr challenge is promotion. Nine players without loans and some players expected to leave. Two youth team players getting a deal, but have not sh made a decision yet. Or far short, sure who's been bagging for fun. To be fair, he could be the one that gets away if we're not careful. Um, season tickets are supposed to be out next week. Um, I will watch it. Over the weekend, and if there's anything else, I will pull out and mention in next week's um, video. But it's good. Again, like with the work going on with the floodlights at the moment, we're getting it right off the pitch. Who would have thought that a year ago? Or if you remember the fans forum under Abdullah, the Lemsigans and Barry Owen, which, to be fair, if you do your searching, it's still doing the rounds. But it was an absolute shenanigans. It made the club owners back then and the people running it an absolute laughing stock. This looks to be done a lot more professionally. Things that have been done properly. We have a nice little European trip over to North Wales. Wrexham on this long unbeaten run, having not lost since they played Notts County in October, and at the moment remain second in the league with two games in hand on them. This will be my fifth visit to the race course ground, our second this season having played them in the FA Cup. I am hopeful that unlike the FA Cup though, where we just seem to throw the towel in at the start, we have a goal, we push on this, we fight, we try and win, we try and get something. Let's not just go there and be overwhelmed by this Hollywood story around them. At the end of the day, they're a football team. Yes, they've got players like Mully who can score goals, go get players like Palmer. Yes, they've just signed Ben Foster. But do you know what? It's 90 minutes and they've got to lose the game sooner or later. Let's derail their promotion challenge. Let's just get stuck in. Let's just have a bit of pride. We were very unlucky when we played them at home in Unsworth's first game where for around 70 minutes we were a better team and we played really well. Let's go into this. Let's be the underdog. Let's be the coupon buster. If we get a draw, I will gladly take a draw. I'll also make watching your spiral carpet tonight even better. Let's not, just go, let's not just go there and let's not just throw the towel in. Near Exum in Chester in a pub, it looks something out of shameless, but let's go for it, let's win, not sit back, let's get the win. Come on, Oldham, see you on the terraces.